All right, so here we have our PE shed. We have cones, flags, miscellaneous equipment, badminton, gator skin, walls, pool noodles, wiffle ball bats, hula hoops, hockey sticks, frisbees, a couple obstacle blocks, frisbee golf. That's the main PE shed over here. We have our recess shed that I can use equipment from if I need to. Plenty of basketballs in here, jump ropes that can be used for obstacles, uh, wiffle ball throwers, uh, a couple other things that kids enjoy using and relays and other activities, hula hoops. ribbons. So that's about it for our equipment storage. Out here we have the black top area. Basketball hoop down here. Basketball hoop on the other side. That's about all we will use the black top for if I'm doing basketball with older kids. Other than that we'll stay on the field to avoid kids running around and falling and hurting themselves. So, I'll take you out to the field now. So this is where most of PE classes take place, is on our field. It's in decent shape. So basically what will happen is I'll be instructed to come in a single file line following me. Students are always required to come from the blacktop, around by the portables, around the cars, and through the field this way. As we come in, the single file line will come down right through this little pathway. They'll come right in here, walking, staying in line. I always emphasize to stay in line until we, until everybody makes it out to the field. They'll stop when they get to this cone. They'll be instructed to be in a straight line, going this way, hands to their side, shoulder to shoulder facing me. From there, I'll give them a warm-up instruction. Usually it's running two giant laps. They'll go all the way around. Usually there'll be cones set up. They'll go behind the goal, around this red cone, back to this tree once they've made it here. For their second lap, they go grab water at our water fountain right over here. You can see it. They'll walk back, get back in the exact same line they were in. <clears throat> then they'll follow me. I'll instruct them to go to one of four lines. So we have our red, our yellow, our green, and our purple cone. From there, they'll do their warm-ups, staying in their lines. They'll have pretty strict instructions as to what they can and can't do. Um, we'll do usually jumping jacks, some sort of jumping jack challenge where they have to do a certain amount and try and freeze at the same time. Uh, stretching, fitness workout for the day, all that kind of stuff. So once we completed our exercises, I'll usually do some sort of fun little like uh, challenge activity that they have to complete in their line. While they're doing that, I'll give each line the opportunity to come over here, grab water, and read our whiteboard. So our whiteboard has our learning objective. 
this just gives them a good overview of what we're going through for the day. So, for example, the lesson that we did today, kicking a soccer ball using the push kick. I'll kind of give them a little brief introduction about that. Uh, they'll have a chance to read it, kind of visualize it. They'll read about the game we're going to play, get some a good little understanding of what's going on. They'll grab water right here, and boom, they're back in their lines. So I'll give each line the opportunity to do that throughout the uh, warm-up exercises or when we're doing a little challenge, a little fun activity, or whatever it is. Then they're all back here. I usually have them sit down. I'll explain the game. This game involves, uh, it's a lead-up game to soccer. So one team will stand on this side, another team on the other side. They're trying to score a goal without crossing the line. They can only stay on their half of the field. These cones represent a restricted area where they're not allowed to block. Balls from going in the goal. Same thing down there, same kind of idea. So this game's really fun. Third and fourth graders really like it. There's a couple of safety instructions I always have to go through, uh, especially with this game. They have to keep the ball no higher than two feet off the ground. If they kick it higher than two feet, that goal will obviously not count. And if they do it twice, they have to sit out for three minutes is usually the rule that I put in. So just to avoid kids getting hit, um, but yeah. That's basically our setup right now. And we work with what we have. Field's in decent shape, but obviously it could be better. Rainy days are a little more difficult. We have to go into an inside room. But like I said, we kind of make do with what we have. So that's my setup at Wildflower Open Classroom. Thanks for listening.